Hey, this is Captain Scott Walker into the Blue TV. Today I'm going to take a few minutes and show you how I set up to go dolphin fishing, aka mahi mahi, aka the Dorado. Whatever you want to call it, it's great to eat and anybody can catch them if you take a few minutes and get yourself set up right. I want to start right now by setting up my trolling rods with a wind on and a quality snap swivel. All right, got a couple of Shimano TAC 25 two speeds. A great all round reel, catches anything from the smallest schoolies to a blue marlin. It's a perfect combination of size to strength, and it's my go to rod for anything in deep blue water. I've got these filled with 30 pound uh, mono. I'm going to tie a quick bimini twist, and then I'm going to show you how to attach the wind on. I'm going to take about two, twice the length of the rod, tighten up my drag, and start at my handle. 30 wraps. I'm done with that. I'm going to get it on my handle and I'm going to tighten it. I have to have a good tight connection from the rod tip to handle. I'm going to slide up about three feet. Then I'm going to hold my right hand steady. I'm going to bring my left hand down until they all bind together. Then I'm going to come down to 45 degrees and slide up. That is a perfect bimini twist right there. Now we're going to stop it with a one hitch through both legs, and then we're going to do seven around both legs on the outside. There you go. That's a 30 second bimini, and it's a perfect one. All right, now that I got my bimini, I can attach snap swivel direct, but I like to have a wind on. So for me, I go to my local tackle shop, West Marine, and I buy some pre-made wind-ons. I like 100 pound test for dolphin, white marlin, and sails. It's a little, just heavy enough, you can grab it three or four times without having to replace it every time. And having this trace at the top makes it real easy to see the fish coming up. So I got, these are pre-made at 20 feet. When I add my 10 foot leader, I'll be less than 30 feet total. IGFA in case I get a world record. So I'm going to drop this on the ground. I get my loop between my finger and a loop from my wind on. I'm going to pinch them tight. I'm going to take my wind on around the mono and through both three times, making a little cat's paw. Okay, that's one. I do that two more times. Two. And last but not least, number three. Boom, through. Now we're going to line them all up real pretty. Pull it nice and snug. There it is. We're done there. Now we've got our wind on. So we need a swivel. Nice dolphin swivel, 150 pounds. I use ball bearing whenever I'm trolling just so we don't have any problems with twists. The uni knot. Get it all lined up. Thumbnail. Pull it tight right here. Trim it pretty. Okay. Swivel, 150 pound, 100 to 150 pound. I choose 150. 100 pound wind on, 30 pound line. Now I have two prospect rods. When I head out dolphin fishing, I don't troll a big spread with an outboard boat. I just like to be able to put out two lures long while I'm coming on a set of birds in case the fish is behind me that I don't spot by, by sight. Now I'm going to show you how to rig the lures next. Okay. When I'm trolling for dolphin, I like to use just the, the simplest of lures. Feathers, billy baits, even just uh, soft heads with, with no bait. I've got baits rigged up and ready to cast a bigger fish. When I'm just hunting for the school, all I like to do is just fire out and just a bait, three to six inches long. Billy bait fits that perfect. It's got a little metal head to kind of hold it down. 
the beauty of it is, if the birds move away quickly, I can accelerate the boat without tearing the ballyhoo off the loop. So I don't put ballyhoos on my prospectors. And like I said, it's anything three to five inches, a blue and white feather, green and yellow, black and red, black and purple, they all work. But it just want to kind of match a small flying fish, which is the main forge fish in the Florida Keys. So for today, I'm just going to re-rig one of these nice little billy baits. So since this is a lure I'm going to use over and over again, I'm going to go a little heavy in a leader. This is going to be some 80 pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to attach a little bit heavier duty uh, 7692 80. I like the, eight, uh, the 7692 because it kind of closes in a little bit like a circle hook, but it's, we still get the hook set of a J hook. And when you're moving along, you just want something a little bit bigger that you can use over and over again and easily dehook the fish and get it back out in the water. All right, got this crimped up. I don't want the crimp to get stuck in, in the feathers itself. So a bead comes in real handy right here. It lets the lure spin around independent of the crimp and you won't get a bunch of uh, snarls, snarls. All right, I got a bead on there. We're gonna attach this on. And then this rod is ready to go. And we'll put it onto the rod. And it'll sit there all day. And as we find a set of birds, we'll deploy. So we got with one bead, I got the hook completely hidden in there. And yet still camouflaged by the feathers. All right, we'll put a loop on the other end, and this thing's done. All right. All right. We've got our little prospector ready to go. Little flea and flying fish. Coil it up. We'll get it on the boat with the rest of our tackle. Again, most important thing about dolphin fishing is just finding the fish, finding the birds. And sometimes the fish will find you before you see them. So having a nice little setup of a couple feathers behind the boat as you're approaching school will score you the fish on the outside and then bring the rest of them to you. So there, there you go, a couple of nice little blue and white feathers. My go-to bait for actually dolphin fishing is a swimming ballyhoo or ballyhoo with a little color to it trolling down a weed line or actually cast in to a big fish you see swimming alongside. So first thing we gotta do is gotta prep our ballyhoo. I've got a dozen ballyhoos, thaw it out. We're gonna prep them. We'll grab a, an arrow from our local tackle shop, pop the eyes. Popping the eyes, it makes the baits easier to rig and they don't wash out as quick. After a few minutes with the eyes in, the eyes will bulge out and create a funny little turbulence and you won't have a real pretty swimming bait. Just takes a second to get it once they're thawed out nice. You want to make sure they're thoroughly thawed so that when you break their backs, you don't tear the meat. All right, got their eyeballs out. Now we got to get the poop out. Start from the throat. Put your thumb down the belt, little cabinet and just sweep back. Careful not to tear them apart. It wants to come out. By doing this, if you're gonna fish a couple of days straight, the bacteria inside the bait won't make it soft. So by the time you rig these and salt them, you, they're good to go for a few days. Give them a quick rinse. I'm going to cut their beaks off so they're all uniform. I want every bait exactly the same. All right, now they're ready for rigging. So, 
I'm still using circle hooks. I know J hooks might be your preferred one, but I'm just, it's what I do. So I'm, I use J hooks for schoolies and, and live bait, but still I'm rigging all my baits with circle hooks. And here's how we're going to get her done. Take a big needle, pop it right through the bottom, right through the center of the jaw. I'm going to do it for all of these. Have them ready to go. Right through the center of the top of the mouth. Doing this so that the copper wire will go in easy. Now some will have long pointies bills left over, some will be flat. I'm going to take the flat square ones and make them swimming baits. The long and skinny ones, I'm going to make surface baits. They'll all have leads, but it's just a matter of how we're going to finish the rig. right there on the top of the head. It's going to line the bait up for rigging. And for a little bit. Now we've got these pre-made rigs. Caught a little, little barrel swivel with a rubber grommet attached to heavy-duty copper wire. Now I like this one. This flat one here is going to be a swimming bait. So we're going to start by poking down to the hole we just made. It's there, I know. We're gonna come through the gill. And we're gonna pull it down to the sw the first swivel. The side of the swivel pops into this mouth. Right there. I'm gonna slide on our lead weight. I've chose a half ounce. I am dolphin fishing. I'm going a little faster. Then we're gonna slide this right between the eyes and slide the gill open. And this one, we're gonna roll up behind the gill, over the head back down the gill. I'm going to go behind the lead and through the eyes. And we're going to go in front of the lead through the eyes. Okay. Now we're going to roll two times behind the swivel. I'm going to finish up in front towards the bill and finish back towards the grommet. Now you have a swimming value. You can cast this bait you control this bait for Dalton. We're going to be ready to do both. We'll have spinning rods ready to cast. And if we decide to go down a weed line and you want a swimming bait, we got a, a rig ready on the trolling pole. So before we put him out, we're going to break his tail real careful. And from tail to the head, we're going to squeeze the spine. You can feel the meat separate from the spine. And that bait's ready to go swimming. I'm right, we'll set him there for now. So I'm going to make a little pick to pull the grommet through the little popper heads. So take a piece of 19 wire, cut it in half, keep the end with a loop. These are for your mullet dredges. And then take your pliers, double it over. If you have a small little hook on there, trim it clean. Just want to be able to go through here, grab your grommet, and pull it through. And then to keep that in your uh, tackle box all season long. All right, so now we're going to grab a bally with a little bit more of a slender bill. And for him, we're going to leave the grommet out front. So we need to know how much length to leave it. So we're going to leave it about three quarters of an inch in front of the bill when we rig this one. So again, here we go. We're going to come through the mouth this time and out the gill. We're going to put our lead on and get it back where we want it. We're going to pull it till we're right where we want to be. When that was about a half an inch, and then we're going to go up and over and rig our bait just like last time. Iron head through the gills. We're going to go behind the lead through the eyes. Front the lead through the eyes. We're going to close the mouth. We're going to keep wrapping forwards all the way to the tip of the beak and bring her back to the eyes. Okay? 
Now we've got just a little, same but different. Now we're going to be able to rig a skipping bait. So I'm going to go through here and grab our grommet, our little grommet tool we just made. I'm going to pull it all through. There. All right, so now we've got a skipping bait ready to just go on a hook or spinning rod. Every now and then you need a little color, change it up. So that's how you do it. We're going to do half a dozen of these. We're going to do some with pointy noses, some with cup noses. But then when we're done, the tackle box will be ready for the day. All right, so I've got my, my ballyhoos rigged. I've got a variety of swimmers and skippers. I've got my feathers for the surface, and then I have to deal with schoolies. Do you want to use a, a dollar a piece ballyhoo, or do you want to use a three a three dollar box, three pound box of squid? Whole squids, the small white ones, are perfect schoolie baits. All you got to do is thaw them out, jab them on a hook, and throw them overboard. Jig them two times, and a schoolie is going to wolf them down. You're going to save a lot of money, and you're going to catch a lot more fish. So you need want your baits for trolling and casting. And then you got your squids when you have the big school behind the boat. They're, they'll eat nothing quicker than a real squid, and boom, you're done. You can chop up a bonita if you got it, but if you don't have, if you're just re getting ready to go fishing, you got to hit your local tackle store, buy some pre-rig ballyhoos. They work just as good as what I did. I'm just a little bit more of a perfectionist. I've got the ballyhoos, so I rig my own. If you don't have the time, grab pre-rig ones. They're in every tackle shop in the entire Keys and South Florida. They work fine. But again, when it comes to having the big school behind your boat, don't chop up a, a ballyhoo. Just grab a box of squids, thaw it out. At the end of the day, feed it to the mangroves behind your dock. Start again the next day. But there you go. Some rig ballyhoos, some trolling feathers, and schoolie baits. Box of squid. All right, now that we've got the baits ready, it's time to put the tackle on board. We've already rigged our trolling rods with snap swivels. They're good to go. We've got the feathers and ballyhoos on ice. They're good to go. We've got our lunch. We're good to go. So now we got to, what are we going to use today? Dolphin fishing is super simple. Grab your favorite pole. I'm going to set up for two different types of dolphin fishing. Schoolie and slammers. Slammers, big fish, 20 pounds plus, the trophies. For my schoolies, I'm going to take a nice 10,000 series Shimano, seven foot pole, I'm going to rig them with 40 pound mono and a 6 or 7 0 long shank hook. Why long shank hook? We're using a long shank hook because we're going to be throwing these things over the rail and we got to get the hooks out quick. If you use a little live bait hook, they're going to swallow every time and you're not going to get your D hooker on it. You're going to end up popping off and time to tie more hooks on. The only thing that slows down a, a big dolphin catch is taking the hooks out. Now I'm going to have my 35 gallon garbage can in the back corner of the boat. Everybody that hooks a fish is going to come to me with that fish. And I'm going to sling it into a garbage can, grab my D hooker, pop it off, grab a squid, put it on their hook, and they're going to walk back to the side of the boat where the school is, and they're going to start fishing again. We're going to get a little circle going. Hook your fish, bring me the fish. I'll D hook it, I'll bait it. You never put your rod down. So if you get someone on the boat that's going to be in charge of getting the fish baited and off the hook. That's a huge part of catching everything that swims up behind your boat. If everybody's just grabbing a rod, taking the fish off, and getting all over the boat, the fish are going to go away. Somebody has to be hooked up the whole time. It's never more important than with school of dolphin than keep one in the boat. Hook one, put it in the rod holder, or hook one and have one of your slower anglers wind it up while you hook others. And then as the second and third one are hooked up, start the machine. Bring one to the garbage can. De-hook it, rebait it, get back in the water, and then that original fish comes out, get that angler back involved. So hook one, keep it alongside the boat. Hook two or three more, then start taking them out of the water, throw them into a garbage can. Why a garbage can? Garbage can keeps the mess down to, to a minimal mess. Dolphins are going to be slinging, flying fish, guts, blood, and everything. If you have it all in one spot, one corner of the boat, the, the garbage can, wait until the school's done and swims away, then Somebody gets back on the binoculars, looking for the next school. Someone takes the garbage can to your cooler, opens the cooler one time. 
not 20 times. Dumps all the fish in, gets them on good ice, close it, rinse the garbage can, bring it back in position, put the dehooker on the handle, and you're ready to go again. But it's nothing better than catching as many fish in the school, keeping it clean and tight, and getting on with minimal amount of cleanup. You don't have a lot of water out there. You have salt water wash down, you don't have a lot of fresh water, and you don't have a lot of ice. A garbage can is gonna take care of two situations, less water and less ice for a bigger, more effective day. I started by telling you, I have two, two poles for dolphin. Schoolie pole, slammer pole. My slammer pole is gonna be a really stout pole, probably six inches shorter, can't cast it as far, but it can lift a big bull. Once they get to 30 plus pounds and get down in current, you really want a, a rod that can lift the fish. So my, my go-to is a 20,000 Shimano full of 60 pound braid with a 60 or 80 pound leader and a seven or eight O hook. Again, long shank, for easy to hook. So we, for the schoolies, there's a lot of competition out there. The fish are getting smarter and the schools are getting smaller year after year. So we're going to 40 pound leader. It'll hold up for most of the day. If you're getting into a lot of fish, you might want to cut your hook back between schools. Not while you're catching them. Burn it up, burn it up, burn it up. But then when someone's cleaning your uh, garbage can out, ice the fish down, have someone else retie the hooks, cut them back 12 inches, and then when you get the leader too short, tie a new one on. But for your slammer pole, you want to keep that one ready at all times because that 50 pounder is going to show up one day. And you want to make sure you have a clean leader, sharp hook, ready to go on a heavier rod. So I go six foot six, you know, extra heavy. I like seven foot medium heavy for my tackle choices with a 10,000 or 20,000 for line capacity. All right, so now we're ready. We've got our schoolie rods, we've got our, our slammer poles, we've got our prospecting poles. It's time to go fishing. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna get, on, I'm gonna get into my radar, and I'm gonna start hunting birds on my radar. I'm gonna take my sim rad, I'm gonna set it to six miles offset, and I'm gonna find flocks of birds six to eight miles out. I'm gonna trust the process, I'm gonna run 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna get into my Nikon binoculars, and it, within two miles, I should see that school of birds excuse me, I should see that flock of birds on top of that school of fish. That being said, once I get them on my binoculars, two miles away and decide if I want to keep going. Are they acting right? Are they doing loop-de-loops? Are they just a bunch of 30 or 40 of them spinning in a circle? If it's 30 or 40 of them, and it's probably skipjacks. And if it's early in the morning, I'm not going to investigate that. Middle of the day, I'm seeing a lot of birds, and that's all I'm seeing, I'm going to investigate. But my first call is let schools of my first move, if I see flocks of 20 or plus birds, I'm not going to really put them on the top of my list. I want to see three to five birds really acting spastic, doing high to low cartwheels, and I'm pretty sure that they're on a school of dolphin migrating through the Florida Keys. Okay. All right. Once I decided that I am going to attack a school of birds with my spread, I'm going to have my, my friends and my clients drop back my two feathers as I slow down. That, that's their job, is to work the two flat lines out past the white water and just get them out there as I slow down. That way I can speed up or slow down and those baits aren't gonna wash off. Then I'm gonna have a ballyhoo already on a pole ready to cast for a fish that I see swimming down sea or beside the boat. So what's our move? Slow down, put out the prospector rods, the feathers. Have a ballyhoo ready to cast with one person ready to do whatever I say. Port side, starboard side, front of the boat, make the cast, get the big fish coming, and then once a big fish bites or doesn't bite, it's time to break out the next. Is there another big fish with them? You grab another ballyhoo. Is there a school of 20 fish? You get out the squid, you, you throw a few out to attract them close to the boat, pull the boat out of gear, start drifting, and harvest in what you want for the day. But as simple as that, find the birds, decide if the birds are worthy of slowing down, slow down, put out the feathers, and a lot of times while you're looking for that one fish, the feathers are going to come off with fish that are on the satellite of the school. And they'll bring the school to you before you find them yourself. But it's really simple. Cover, cover your bases. Cover the fish you can't see with feathers. Have a bait ready for the fish you can't see with the ballyhoo. If they don't eat the ballyhoo, switch to a live bait. But have everybody knowing what their job. Everyone has to have a job. If you have a job that makes fishing more fun and keeps you more active and alert all day long. The more alert you are, the more fish you're going to catch. And it's simple as giving everybody a job. It doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but if I have a job to do, that's all I focus on. And that's what your clients and friends should do as well. 
Everything I showed you here today is available at your local West Marine. I shop at mine in Almron and Marathon in Key West. They're all over the country. I'm sure there's one near you. If you need anything, be sure to spend some time with their tackle center. They'll help you out. They help me. They'll help you.